One of the more uh, poignant things that inspired me to become a chef was my desire to eat food. I love it. And growing up, we didn't have a lot of great food. My mom couldn't cook, my dad didn't cook, and I knew if I was gonna do that, I needed to figure out how to make it. I was a vegetarian for quite some time, and as I was becoming a chef, one chef would tell me, as a young cook, he said, if you want to be good at what you do and you want to be an expert at your craft, you need to taste what you're doing. And he was right. I started tasting meat you know, pretty much that day, and I think within a week I was eating foie gras and steak tartare, and it was awesome to taste all those new flavors. It was like discovering something new for my mouth. When I first started cooking, I saw a lot of the, the different cuts like uh, tripe and uh, sweet breads and people didn't use them a lot and I thought oh, how can I you know take these things that are inexpensive that are part of the animal and if we're you know we're killing these animals for a reason and we need to use all of it and how can I transform this into something edible as a young cook you want to be creative and you want to you know be able to make your own food and a chef's not going to let you do that with something that costs a lot of money so for me it was the first time I got to really experiment as a cook was with the off cuts and all the offal and I you know developed a really big taste for it and said you know everybody's wasting all these things and nobody cooks them anymore this is what's going to set me apart and that's what I started focusing on and got pretty good at it anybody can learn how to cook a trout anybody can learn how to boil a potato but taking something that is inherently terrible smelling bad tasting and has a terrible texture and turning it into something good is hard and I started doing that and taking something that like you couldn't tear in half it was firmer than a phone book and it smelled awful and t transforming that into something silky and tender and delicious that was how I knew that this is what I wanted to do and focus on these kind of cuts and meats. I think people when they're coming to Toro, they're, they're coming for all the, uh, the different things that we do and they know that we get in a lot of whole animals and that we treat them differently every time. You know, we're not a safe restaurant. Over the years we've had tons of different offal. Everything from pig's tails, tripe, kidneys, pig's ears, tongues, lamb's tongues, lamb heart, pig heart, beef heart, I mean, everything you could imagine. If there's a part of an animal that can be consumed, we do it. It's a great feeling for me when people come in and they say, I will never eat calves brains. It's weird. And we have a calves brain ravioli on the menu and somebody else at their table gets it. And they get talked into trying it and they eat it and it's delicious. And then I go over, oh, how was your dinner? And they say, I've never had calves brains before. I can't believe how luscious they were, how creamy and how delicious and mild they were. Right there, I feel like I've done my job. I've taken something that somebody would have thrown away and I've made somebody else eat it in a way that they've enjoyed themselves. And that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of what I do. Take food, make it taste good, give it to people, they eat it, they swallow, have a nice day.